I switched my topic twice <laughs> since yesterday. Really? <laughs> because I was like, oh, I want to do this. Oh, no, wait, I want to do this. And oh, my God, I need to do this. And then I decided on something else. But now I know what I do for the next three. I'm like, so oh, see? excited. Perfect forward planning. No I way. thought I was about to say, can you give one of them to me and like hand, no hand me over your research? Because nope. <laughs> I'm super busy for the next two weeks. And I don't I know. know when I'm going to find time to. I know. And I it'll keep, be last minute, last minute, I, Lucy. Last well, minute. this, this was me because I just came up with this last night and I was like, Oh, I know what I'm going to do, but you can, you can, you can piggyback off of this idea of how I'm setting up, setting it up. You want to hear what I did? Well, yeah, because I might not want to piggyback off of it. No, <laughs> just the approach. It's like a little bit of a cheat kind of because, okay. because Perfect. what I, what I did was, well, it was, it, it helped alleviate some of that pressure of having to do like a deep dive on one thing. Well, because I started going through the witchcraft and second sight in the Highlands and Islands of Scotland book by John mm -hmm. Gregerson Campbell, which we've referenced many times. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for something specific based on what I was researching. And then I just, as I do get caught up, like flipping through these books and being just delighted by all the funny little things that they're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, in these awesome old folklore books. So I decided, I was like, wait a second. What if I just did like the top 10 most interesting or quirky or funny or scary things from like my favorite books? And then that's what I did. Oh, that sounds so exciting. I can't wait to hear what they are. Right. And that way, instead of having to know everything about one thing, we could do a little bit about lots of things. So I hope that's that format. It's okay with you today. Oh, every format is okay with me. <laughs> Especially when it's not your week. I know that's how I am. I'm like, you can literally talk about I was going to say, do you know why I love these weeks so much? Because yes. I don't have to. Um, yeah. Actually, I do love the research. I have to I say that. Too. But it, there's always a little bit of a relaxed sigh when it's your turn. And I go, okay, yeah. oh, I just get to be the audience. I, know. And I don't have to I know. panic that I've researched enough. I know. I trust me. I feel the exact same way. I'm so grateful on the weeks that I get to have a rest. Um, <laughs> we sound so enthusiastic. <laughs> no, but we're just really busy people. I mean, I have three kids. We I do love of, a research though. I, do I love too. a research. I really, really enjoy it. Um, I also really enjoy drinking while we're podcasting and we haven't done it in like 12 weeks so I know, we've been so sober oh my god it's not okay we really need a drinking episode yeah really let's I, do I need week. it anyway <laughs> next week drinking let's get okay. some whiskey and do next week we need drinking. to commit to the weekend drinking episode I am like ready because yeah, yeah. this tea is no longer cutting it for me Oh my gosh. So are you ready to hear my top 10 most fun folklore facts from I I am. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> from John Gregerson Campbell. Do oh I my... have that book? What's it? What's the name of it again? It's called Witchcraft and Second Sight in the Highlands and Islands of Scotland. Correct. I read that. I read the screen. I didn't just I know. magically know that. Yes. Karen so, actually held that up to the screen. I could I see know. it. It's so good. Do you have it? Or you're not sure? I, I and mean, you're like me of so many, you don't know what you have anymore. I can't remember what I've got anymore. It's a good it's a good one. I've, I've tried to stop <gasps> buying books, but I did order just before you start. Yeah. Um, it hasn't arrived yet, but I got the dispatch notice. It's coming soon. Ooh. The um yeah. the fairies of the fault lines book by oh. Iris oh Pinkett. yes I did get that one too <laughs> so I, I haven't got it yet it's but really it good. should be arriving soon and I can't wait for it to arrive because it yeah. looks so beautiful it is really really good I was really good I only bought one book this week although it costs as much as five books but I only bought one and I'm very proud of this <laughs> oh. what, what was the one that you bought God, don't. I don't want anyone to look it up and see how much it costs. Um, although the one I bought was severely discounted because it has the front and back cover ripped off. Well, why You're don't like, do you, you still want it? I'm like, yes, I still want it. I don't care. Why don't you give a, a, a fake name and it's then called... tell me later? I looked it up on Amazon. It was like $570. And I was like, there must be another one. And I did find another one. And again, it has no cover. So it's it's like 
heavily discounted. Wait, I can't even remember. I bought it for some random um, bookstore in the UK. Remember in Scotland it was by yes. you. It's mm-hmm. called, I'm looking it up because I can't even remember. Um, you bought it from a books shop that's actually not far from me, which right. I didn't know existed. And I'm going to go and check it out. It's up in Ballater, I think, oh, yeah, or Pimar, somewhere like that. It is called, oh, here it is. Yeah, a D-side books. It's called The Peat Fire Flame, Ooh. which just the name is sounds so good, doesn't it? Yes. And it's by somebody McGregor. And I forget. And is it stories or a uh, um, academic text? I don't actually know, but I was listening. <laughs> I doesn't hope even matter that coming. Money, I'm just so, like it. so happy it's coming um it was oh my god oh and I found another podcast and I actually wanted to ask you if you had listened to them Ooh. um so so good hold on I What's have it called to, I have to pull it up so I can ask you it was amazing I think they have a really big presence and I don't know how I've gone this long without bumping into them before do, do I you think they're they're number 14 in Jamaica <laughs> in the travel section Lucy it's not like every podcast it's like the one little niche hey come on number 14 <laughs> it's called the myth legend and lore podcast narrated oh, by I, Sh- Siobhan Clark oh it's I so think, good I think I do listen <sighs> to that one I forgot I've not I have I have lost count of the number yeah. of podcasts I listen to I listen to absolutely tons of podcasts I know me too um but I do have that one on my list um I actually attended a conference that Mm -hmm. sounds super academic really does Uh, last weekend it was so nice and it was run by the witches of Scotland oh yes right you were gonna tell me about that yeah 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 and it was so good it was like three and a half hours long they actually uh, uploaded their most recent episode is is the conference they zoom oh, record it. wait so what's the name of their pod- is it a podcast the witches of scotland do i do i listen to it or why you else? have to listen to it if you don't uh, listen to it already yeah I'm, clearly i do wait yeah why and so this? this conference they had a whole bunch of guest speakers Subscribe. and it was mostly focused on um how people could go about researching if they wanted to research oh. into the witches of Scotland oh, and awesome. it was so interesting it was really good I sat and painted while it was going oh. on because it was three and a half hours and it it was a zoom but luckily we didn't have to show our own faces we yeah. got to switch our cameras off right and it, it, yeah it was a really really good one and so that latest episode is their latest episode oh yeah so I see they, it they episode 41 it. three hours and 11 minutes oh my god yeah. you just made my whole day oh thank you so much for sharing I'm I just yeah. subscribed I am absolutely gonna check that out <gasps> yeah it's a really good podcast so what that podcast want to do is they want to bring to light the people that were accused of being witches oh. and <clears throat> like honor um, their memories they want to honor their memories but they also want to get pardons for them oh that's amazing how and, nice is that and After then the fact. also do um get I think like some memorials and things set up mm-hmm. for the actual people in the areas that they were accused or put on trial or so on and they also speak to people from like for example in one of their episodes they spoke to somebody from Salem about the Salem Mm -hmm. witchcraft trial so it's not exclusively um it's not exclusively all about the Scottish witchcraft Mm -hmm. trials although it focuses on that they bring in other people being a really good advertiser for somebody else's podcast here but I I think it's great to I think it is to share podcasts that we think are interesting I feel like that's become our job it's like I know like research find and share you know because I love it when I yeah when I listen to podcasts that where people recommend other podcasts I always think if I like their podcast I'm gonna like that person's podcast that they're recommending and it's a great way of finding new podcasts and expanding your podcast I know 
I wonder if we should add that to our website, like where our like book list is. We could maybe have a podcast. Oh, yeah, that well. would be good. Because mm. I do, like I have so many as well and it makes it way easier to keep track of everything for sure. Yeah. All right. So oh, I also signed up for Audible last week. I know I have Audible too. And so um, the first book that I downloaded was the fourth book in the Deborah Harkness series. Oh, that's right. I wanted to write that down. What is it called? And so the first three books in her series are called the All Souls Trilogy and they are amazing. They are so good. Okay. And they're about, the, I'm going to explain them, but they are seriously not twilighty teenagey they're more of an adult version of this but they're about witchcraft and vampires and demons oh, yeah. and that whole universe mm -hmm. um but they're so good and I did not know that there was a fourth book in the, the it's an offshoot so it's mm -hmm. I think the third book kind of wrapped up that trilogy of stories and this is an offshoot and I discovered there was a fourth book and I was like, I'm never going to get around to reading it on top of all the other books that I have to read. I know, my God, my so stack. Which, what's I, the author again? Deborah Harkness. Okay, I'm writing that down. Which is actually the name of the building that I lived in when I was at college in the States. Oh, really? Hark Harkness, yeah. It was, the, it was the hippie hall. Did you, we would have been friends in college because I was a hippie as well. And no one else was, but I was. Yeah. A hippie vegetarian co-op. That's why I oh, lived in. I was not a vegetarian. I do love some meat. Are you still a vegetarian? I no, I but was it was a vegetarian co-op. Yeah. Oh, got it. Do you say Harkness or Parkness with a P? Harkness with, with an, an H. H. That's what yeah. I said. For some reason, I picked up a P. Weird. Okay. I got it. I wrote it down. I'm ready. Yeah, I, um, I have Audible subscription too. I don't listen to it half as much as I do just straight up podcasts there are podcasts on audible that are only on audible as well which I, d I don't understand why you would do that but I guess you get monetized it better and faster mm -hmm. if you go through that but um yeah it's a whole bunch of good good stuff up on there so thank you for the recommendations yeah I'll check out that book it's, oh. it's start it start at book one okay I will because otherwise it won't make any sense to you yeah no, I and I think that. book one is called Discovery of Witches. Okay. I wrote down the All Souls trilogy by Tembra Harkness. And then there's actually a TV it. show that's oh, got there? the first two, the first two seasons is book one and book two. And they're so freaking good. And you know that I make, give you good recommendations. Always. I know you've never once let me down. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Come on, you actually. need some back though. You need to put the work oh. in. I oh. need a good TV show to watch. <laughs> We have watched a lot of good things. I'm just super bad because, oh, we have this weird thing when we watch anything, Netflix, movies, it doesn't matter. If I say the words, oh my God, that looks so good. Let's watch that one. And then we watch it. It unilaterally and universally sucks. It's like oh, really? this <laughs> weird, like really weird phenomenon. And it, it's so true. You mean you have bad taste? So bad. It's like I just can't call it from the trailer <laughs> or whatever. I believe you've got bad taste. Well, I you've just got it's good like taste, I, lady. I can't. Well, I yeah, I I like after the fact, but I can't seem to be able to like call it. Like I can't predict if something will be good. So Sean has, is like addicted to like watching trailers, and I hate it. Like he'll spend a whole night and just watch trailers for like four hours. That's like my worst nightmare. That's so he'll. Awful. <laughs> sounds awful I know I'm like just fucking watch something she, like press the play button it like drives me nuts but when we do that and I'm the one who says it it sucks every time but if he chooses something it doesn't matter what it is it's always super good and so now even if I like just see it casually like I have to literally like be really careful not to say or uh, say the words or even have an opinion on it. Like I have to just like shut my mouth. <laughs> I'm, I'll be like, mm. and then I'm like, mm, nope, I didn't say, I didn't say anything. No, nope. because the second I want to watch something, it sucks. I'm not, it's not a joke. That's actually, so I'm not going to watch any of your recommendations. But then. no, well, that would recommendations be recommendations for me from Sean, please. Yes. 
I would be happy to share you Sean's recommendation. He's <laughs> super good at it. And we definitely watch really good things. But, but because he's the one who like previews them and check picks them, I never know what anything is called. That you know was- what I bet he does, Karen? I bet in secret he sneakily watches like the first three episodes oh. to check whether they're any good before doing that so that he can win you in the war of who the picks movie the best preview shows. war well he is kicking my ass at the current time so whatever method he's using it's working against me well all you need to do is follow my recommendation i know you and then you can win him in the picking the good things okay. for because i've already vetted them for true. you true yeah and he liked all of your recommendations as well so it was like it was you, you, you I just don't tell call. him they're mine tell no, him they're was, yours can I do that with your blessing yeah yeah of course you can okay next time I won't I love you I'll give you my recommendation it's really transparent and I don't even think to lie about things like that <laughs> Lucy said we have to watch this no 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 what you say is what you say is I think we should watch that that looks really good I don't oh, no. know anyone that's watched it <laughs> but Lucy what if in my saying that then it will suck the one time I don't give you credit, <laughs> it's going to be bad. Because that's but what also, happens. You would know whether he actually listened to our podcast or not, because we talk about our recommendations. That is podcast. true. There is no way he listens to my podcast. He oh, has yeah. zero time or interest in his crazy wife. He has interest, but he definitely does not have the time for sure. So we can speak about him. Hi, we're talking about know. you right now. He just walked in. <laughs> Hi. You're on the podcast. That's correct. At least you're not naked this time. <laughs> well, not yet. I was about to go. Are oh, you about to take a shower? Yeah. I'm That's hilarious. Why are you always shower during my podcast? Speak of the devil. Weird. We're all watching you. Weird. <laughs> Can I tell you this really cool fun fact before yes. we, we jump into your fun facts? Of course. That um, someone sent me, my actually my good friend Carol Paris, who is a listener of the podcast. Hi, Carol. Thank you for and listening. And she, she actually referenced something. I saw her the other night. We went and drank copious amounts of gin and tonic. Oh, I'm so jealous. In a bar. And um, we had so much fun. <gasps> and I want to drink copious amounts actually, in a bar. Yeah. She actually referenced something from one of our latest podcasts. So I was like, you've been listening. I can tell oh, you've been listening. What'd you say? I was super impressed. That's so uh, nice. It was something to do with the Eurisk. <gasps> oh. I yes. can't remember what because I'd had a nice. gin and tonics by then. So <laughs> I c- can't really oh. remember what she said. And nice. I actually can't really remember much nice. about that episode. <laughs> this is a good story, Lucy. <laughs> I got a she nice... Said- Go ahead. She sent me a link today, which is cool. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to read it out because it's super short. And okay. it's the tale of the fairy knots. Have you heard oh. of this? Uh, not, I don't think so. So the knots that appear in a horse's mane are known as fairy knots. Oh, no, I've not During heard of the this. night, it is said that a group of fairies wander out in search of horses. Once their ideal horse is found, they actually twist their manes to form little stirrups and reins on the horse. <gasps> they then ride the horses all through the night and take them on magical adventures. The horses are always returned by morning, but the knots are left for when the fairies come again. Oh, I love that. Isn't that so cool? It's so cool. Oh, I love that so much. I know. <laughs> It was off of a Facebook post. Yeah, that's um, super neat. Yeah. No, I love that. That little factoid. That that factoid. Like a little in line with the little factoids that I'm going to be reading you. Let's the hear them. So that's like a perfect segue. Well, it thanks, is. Carol, and thanks for listening. So, <clears throat> so this guy, John Gregerson Campbell, his name comes up a ton, especially yeah. b- by, I learned about him through Catherine Briggs. And so the so the folklorists that she references repeatedly are all the ones that I've been like scurrying to collect. Yeah. And because we love her recommendations. We <sighs> trust them wholeheartedly. Yes. She is the queen. And, but she gets yeah. most, I, I, that's probably the wrong word. A lot of her research comes off of the backs of these guys who are like the original folklorists because they are actually out collecting these stories in first person from the people telling the stories. Yeah. And what made him such an excellent folklorist um, was for a couple of very distinct reasons. One was that he is, was fluent in Scottish Gaelic. 
super fluent in a lot of languages. So when he is hearing these original tales in first person by speaking Scottish Gaelic, he can accurately and immediately translate translate them into Mm -hmm. English. So you're not losing anything. Like all the nuances that are lost ordinarily are not lost. Like he is able to preserve all of that. And he also was corresponded a lot with another folklorist last name Campbell, whose name also comes up a ton in Catherine Briggs research, uh, who is John Francis Campbell, who they were contemporaries. Mm -hmm. And he was related. They were not related. No, were they either of them related to Sean Campbell? They are both uh, Sean's great great uncles. No, I'm just oh, kidding. There is see. It's all coming together now. <laughs> yes. Um, no, the, I'm sure they could absolutely have been related at some point. Since, but the Campbell Let's just is say a, they are. Yeah, just just hell yeah, they are. they are. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. They could absolutely have been though, because Scotland is not enormous, and they're both still there. And the, the Campbell clan is goes way back and is humongous. Um, is the the Isle of I S L A Y? Can you remind me how to say that correctly? Is it? Is it- I would say Eile. Okay, that's what I thought. I, but I don't know whether that's okay. correct, but I don't care. That's the way I say it. Okay, well, if you say it, that's all I'm going to say. I know it wasn't Islay, which is the dumb way to say it, but um, he was, so he is the, the Francis, it, he's o- often referred to as like J.F. Campbell or the Campbell of, of Eile. And then there's John Gregerson Campbell, who's also known as uh J-, J G Campbell's just FYI for other just confuse folklore things. nerds out there. So one of the reasons can we say was, Campbell number one and Campbell number two? Well, we'll just say John Gregerson. How about we say okay. that? And he they Wikipedia refers to him as Gregerson Campbell. But um he was um he was born in Argyle in 1836. Um, but he was really, really interested in folklore. He was a minister. And one of the other reasons that made him that made him such a good folklorist was that he was really concerned with the fact that, you know how so much of Celt- Celtic history was written down by ministers, right? Christian ministers. Yeah. And he was very um, aware of the fact that... Um, a lot of Scottish ministers, their attitudes towards like traditional beliefs and uh, myths of, you know, the native parishioners mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, were off. They were often very dismissive of them. And, and he was very aware the of chapters, that. The yeah. chapters, that's yeah. what we would say. So you like, heard that word? I have Shooter. not heard that. We don't have the sounds in American English. So no. What if you're a tutor, you're like a country bumpkin. A country type. bumpkin. Like yeah, a hick. Tuch- they would just call him a hick. Yeah, a tutor. That's, so that's funny. what we say. That's what we say up in the Northeast, a tutor. So he. Just thought I'd give you a new Scottish I know. word. In I love it. I love my, my daily dose, my weekly dose of Scottish words. <laughs> he really. So he was very sensitive to that. And he really, Uh he really had the opposite point of view saying that he regarded the narrators of these people that are retelling these oral stories to have powers of mind of a highest order. Like he had like mad respect for these storytellers and all the things that, cause you have to, I mean, they, some of these are rhyming. I mean, you know, some of these ballads, they are mm-hmm. like novel lengths and these people memorize yeah. them all they've been passed down. So he really did his best to translate exactly what they were saying so that they could preserve the history and like he he left out he was very he tried to be very objective and like leave out his own opinions leave out the christian faith and just preserve what was handed to him which like hello mad respect for that right yeah totally super cool um and so yeah so that i I love his little his little backstory and you can go to wikipedia and, and read more there's more on to talk about there, but I didn't want to belabor it. I just thought I just kind of pulled out the most mm-hmm. give relevant, us a little just to give us a little, little bit backstory, of a story back, like background so, information yeah. on who this was and, and give these guys credits yeah. because without this book, you know, and these we contributions, wouldn't be able to talk about stuff for yeah. hours and hours. And we, hours. Well, yeah, we actually could totally fill this, this these waves with pretty much anything, but they wouldn't be as cool as what I'm about to share with you. <laughs> in the, anything the like next what, dogs and cats. Cats and 
<laughs> be really good. There's Maggie, dead Maggie, as always. Um, so yeah, so these are just top 10. There's way more than top 10 things in this book to discover. So, you know, I definitely don't, don't, don't think I'm s- summarizing everything in so here. What, these are just- another week we'll get like, it's going to be the charts. So like another week we'll get from 10 to 20. Oh, I could do that. There's enough yeah. in here. We absolutely could keep top going. 40 countdown. Yes. <laughs> So here we go. I'm just going to start in no particular order. And, and my pages are all out of order, actually. So this isn't number one, then? This is my number one, but this is not John's number one. Okay, but you can say it's your number one. Oh, so that's it's true. Not in, it is in a particular order. It's your okay. top ten. So. And you know what, Lucy, you do have this book. Because we re- we took turns reading little snippets of it once at the end of an episode when we were laughing at some of the quirky things that were in here. I probably do have. So I think, I think that you do. So this one, as the title suggests, witchcraft and second sight is all of these have to do with witches. So he was collecting stories. Yes. Of witches and people's response to witches. So in here are like, um, uh, chants, charms, and they're all they're all recorded on behalf of people that were practicing witchcraft or were familiar with with the practices. Yeah. So, um, so this one is in on page fifty nine for anyone who owns the book and wants to follow along. This one <laughs> is in regards to having a toothache. And you might remember some of these. So, this is how this would be. This is the cure. I read this aloud to Max last night because it was who was my now 13 year old. He was dying. It was so funny. So it says this excruciating disease was supposed to be capable of cure. Are you ready for this? This is how you cure it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super ready. You have two choices. You can either put a dead man's finger in your mouth. (laughs) (laughs) disgusting I wasn't expecting that oh Karen Campbell did you not give me a content warning <laughs> this is why we need you a drink uh, when we are reading these things uh, is that really a finger of a dead person yes. or is it like a dead man's finger the fungus no it's literally a dead man's finger because you're also supposed to actually go to the graveyard it's like specific what? Yes. oh my god <laughs> <laughs> but if but there's That's, good news there's good news so really there's really good news. news you have an alternative if you can't oh, put thank that god for that if you can't you put, know <laughs> a rotting a rotting finger that's probably like this is from the highlands and islands in scotland in what like it 1600s or something i can't imagine that finger would have been very clean and right even clean. when he was alive and i it, know apparently do your nails not continue to grow when you die mm. i don't know is so it would there not be like oh, really long gross oh do they really <laughs> keep <laughs> am i just gonna make you vomit <laughs> That's well, disgusting. you were the one that shocked me, so I had to get you back. <laughs> Wait, did it, do your nails really grow after you're dead? I thought your hair and your nails start continue to grow after you were dead. Oh, they do. Ew. I, might be wrong. I need to <laughs> Google be, that. I need to Google wrong. that immediately. Oh yeah, and by the way, last episode we were talking about Gray Fox Day, and I was talking about <laughs> and I was Guy talking Gray Fox Night. Guy <laughs> Fox Night. <laughs> You didn't even get right. I can't even get it right on the replay. And I, was, night. and I was talking about when when girls ask guys to dance, that's called the Sadie Hawkins dance, which is totally different and not even remotely the same. I'm a that's big our dummy. Connections but to see, steal from my favorite yeah. murder, that's our connections corner. This corner. I know, exactly. And then I but ever since then I've been kicking myself for not just having Googled the damn thing while we were live. And so I'm gonna Google that right now hold on yeah because we actually got a few people Do your commenting fingernails on our and hair keep growing after you're dead according to uams health after death dehydration causes the skin and other soft Ugh. tissues to shrink this occurs while the hair and nails remain the same length this change in the body creates the optical illusion of growth people observe oh. see 
No, it's an kind optical of. illusion. Ew, because your flesh shrinks and it just makes them look longer. <laughs> That's gross. I think we just lost food of our five listeners. <laughs> Super sorry. <laughs> All right. So let me give you a look. So if you can't grab a dude's dead finger, because oh, there's just some weird like, shortage. Get in your mouth. That sounds yep. like a weird fetish. That's as gross as the Ben Mia and like going up and sucking on her nasty boob. That's it's exactly disc- as gross. <laughs> I don't know which one is grosser, actually. Um, so if you don't have a dead dude, you can actually just put a coffin nail in your mouth. Oh. But then even luckily. if you have, but the person resorting to this cure must go for the nail or the dead man's finger actually to the graveyard. You can't just be given one as a nope. present by nope. uh, uh, your trusty local Highland practitioner of medicine. Yeah. And then your it's- dentistry, your, your, your local dentist, you can't. If nope. you've got local dentist on the NHS, you can't just get your free appointment and well, get your dead man's finger. You actually have to go and dig one up from the yep, graveyard. Yeah. Maybe you could just sneak into like a funeral. You think you just sneak in and when no one's looking real quick, just pop his finger in. Chop it off. <laughs> I just need to borrow this for one second. How do you decide finger. which finger? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. Mm. I just wish I was drinking right now. It would just make this oh, whole you're episode. So disgust- I love I you so much, but you're right. so disgusting. I didn't write it. This is the ri- this is the witchy research. But I they do sum this up saying that <clears throat> that part of the experiment was rarely tried. Weirdly. Uh, uh, you, surprise, surprise. You would just think everyone would be running I know. to the graveyard. And then it does also say, as in the case of those who have to go have a tooth pulled, weirdly. I inserted the weirdly. The pain disappears on the way. Huh. Look at that. So it does work. Because even just going to the graveyard, you're like, you know what? My tooth is feeling super good right now. I am all set. I don't think I need the finger treatment. (laughs) I think that I am feeling better. I managed to cure myself all of a sudden. So it does. I think it works. Just, Just bringing it up like is a cure. Or just pull your tooth out. Or just the thought of pulling it out. You're like, you know, maybe what? that's in. how they managed to get people to pull out their rotten teeth. Was Ugh. like, if you don't pull out, if I, if you don't let me pull out your oh, rotten I tooth can't. with no anesthetic, because we I don't can't. do that shit in 1600s, Ugh. then um, you're gonna have to stick a dead man's finger in your mouth, Ugh. and the kid would go, okay, take my tooth, take yes. my tooth. Oh, I can't have this conversation anymore. I have like a real tooth thing. I know. Thank you. That was right. a great way to start off. <laughs> on that note, I'm going on to number two. Oh, does it get better? Number worse? two. Well, it depends on which role you have to play. So this is oh. from page 60. So you only have to flip the page in order to get this little dose of fun facts. I'm sure they I'm sure they flipped the page already, actually. <laughs> fun at the folklore. first mention of dead man's fingers. <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> fun fab fun fab that's the name of my book fun folklore (laughs) facts okay so this is a cure there's a few suggestions on how to cure madness and they vary um, based on your geography or where you are living so in the highlands the cure for madness is uh rough usage and in parentheses, he clarifies saying this it often amounts to brutality. So just in case you're wondering, super Let's rough. Beat the madness out yeah. of them. Yep. Rough so, usage. <laughs> so in the Highlands, the, that was that was considered the most suitable treatment for those suffering under just this greatest of human misfortunes is just beat the shit out of them. That just seems blatantly unkind. I wonder yeah. if it worked. That's awful. Okay. So, but then on, oh no, we are still in the Highlands. Oh, <laughs> they get very specific on the way in which you are supposed to beat them. And this is, has to be on the Thursday. It cannot why, be. Why does it have to be a Thursday? It cannot be. It's just a witchy thing. Don't ask okay. questions. Cannot oh. be any other day of the week okay. except for Thursday. And it parentheses, it says it should be no other day. Oh, Yes. 
a I wonder person, what I'm the kind of person that would try it on another day. To you see know what? what? Happened. It probably didn't. It probably doesn't work. You go through all of this and then it doesn't even work except for that one time it worked on a Thursday. So it must have been a Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So a you person. You don't want to get beaten up every single day, do you? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they ran their experiments to see maybe just, you know, Thursday was the day. A person. <laughs> so on Thursday takes the lunatic or the madman behind him on a gray horse and gray is italicized. So that's very important. It must it be. It has to be horse. gray. Yes. And they have to gallop at the horse's utmost speed, not once, not twice, but three times around the boundary mark and then up into an immovable, humongous stone. What? Yep. <laughs> and then they're not quite one. There's one more tiny step after the gray horse on Thursday. So if, if you have no gray horse in your village, you are, you are screwed screwed yes but you're just gonna stay mad yes you are a lunatic forever um but the last thing that they have to do after they run around at top speed this three times they have to they have to make the madman speak after that they have to he has to speak to the stone because that's not a mad thing to do at all but then if that happens then the cure is complete what does he have to say to the stone um it doesn't say what maybe it doesn't matter maybe he just has but to say everything something. else is super specific you think oh, that the, what you have to say would be super specific you, I, Come on, yeah. it has to be a thursday it yep. has to be a gray horse you have yes. to go three times round True. and then stop at a stone but we don't care what you say there it, i'm so sorry there is no more information on that treatment would you like to hear about what they do for madness in the um, Hebrides Islands? However? Yes, I would. So in this in this particular place, they actually put a rope around the madman's waist, and then they drag him after a boat until he's nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> Your microphone always cuts out when you laugh so hard, and it makes me so sad because then I just Aww. you just hear the silence. Yeah. And it's so sad. It's probably a good thing for our no. listeners because it's like a loud cack- cackle. No, I love um, it. That's hilarious. That's right? like, we're going to make you so ill by yes. giving you a 16th century version of a, yes. I can't remember what they're called, that things where you're tied to something and you get dragged Quarter- by a boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like. Oh, behind the boat. Yeah, that's a new one. I didn't know that one. But if you're on an island, that seems appropriate. But what's that called? What's know. that called in modern day times? <laughs> and it's actually like a sport and people pay to do it. Oh, like wakeboarding? Is that what it's called? That's one of you can get pulled on all sorts of things behind a boat. Parasailing, wakeboarding. Yeah, so people do sure. it for fun. Yes. Now. Yes. People do well, it for not, fun now. Not getting but, dragged with a rope around their waist. That's a little bit more painful because they're like, oh, oh. They, they did it. <laughs> they did it because they were mad. That's true. They didn't even get that it could be fun. Just went right over their heads. Maybe that's where it got oh, invented. Maybe that is where it was invented. <laughs> <laughs> we figured it out. Oh, we're genius. We'll have to go into Wikipedia and fill that in. Wakeboarding yes. was invented yeah, yeah, yeah. in 1569 with the advent of the cures for madness in the in Hebrides. The Hebrides. And one one day, one of the lunatics discovered if he put if he put a wooden board under his feet, that it was really good fun. <laughs> and you weren't even mad anymore. It's like a double <laughs> win. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to go on to number three. Okay. Number three is just two pages earlier on page 58. There's two, there's two good, good ones on this one. This is the cure for warts. Oh, I don't have warts, so I don't need this, but just in case. Yeah. I have tons of warts. No, I'm just kidding. I, no <laughs> I am currently wartless. Just I nearly it, went. Let it be now. <laughs> oh, Rose. I'm glad you're <laughs> glad you're an ocean away from me. Oh, I have no <laughs> words. I would tell you if I did. Don't worry. These were cured by putting in a bag 
as many knots or joints of straw or grass. This reminds me of the horse's mane that you just told Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You put as many knots of straw or grass as there are warts to be banished. And then you leave them on a public road. Okay. (laughs) Then the first person who lifts the bag now has the warts. It's gonna get oh, the warts. Yeah. So evil. Yep. So you get rid of that them like horrible. giving them to someone else. I yes. wonder if that works for other things. Yes. I could think of a few things I'd quite like to pass on to other people. And I might even strategically place them um at a time when I know that person's passing so that mm. they would pick up the thing that I wanted to get rid of. <laughs> right. <laughs> Your garbage. Like, so you can just road. imagine. I mean, some of my neighbors. <laughs> <you can> just <laughs> imagine that you could like not all your straw and leave it in a bag, but only drop the bag if you thought that, like, you know, Mr. McGregor was walking past at five to nine in the morning. You'd like drop your bag at at six minutes to nine so that mm-hmm. mr mcgregor is the one that finds it oh yes ah, you you're gonna get my now. warts that's <laughs> super mature <laughs> yeah. well you know <clears throat> let's There's, not break with tradition in our you, podcast I, yeah right we have a uh, um there's another equally efficacious plan as it says What's for also mean? warts like super successful plan okay plan, plan that works effective uh was to take a grain of barley for every wart Uh and bury it in some retired spot so i'm assuming that means somewhere that nobody goes and then it would just make sure that no one ever disturbs that um which seems less vindictive than leaving it in a bag for your neighbor that you don't like to grab yeah it's it's a little more boring it's a nicer option but to be honest it's a bit more boring I kind of like the idea of passing my warts on to somebody I I don't like I kind of like that (laughs) after this week I'm ready to like pass my warts on a few I kind of wish I had warts now so I could do that (laughs) let's try it try it and I'm a little bit like a little bit annoyed that I don't have warts so I can't pat but that being said just because I don't have warts like nobody come and do pass me their warts Ooh. thank you very much oh don't grab the bag I just see this grabbing. lunch bag in like the middle of the road I need that bag don't get the bag there's warts in it don't <laughs> don't pick up unattended baggage you never know what could be in it. It could be a bomb or it could be a bag of warts. Oh you my never gosh. know. Oh my God. Okay. I have to laugh because my cat and dog are on either sides of this closed door and my cat's little paw is sticking out and Maggie's like <laughs> slamming it with her giant dog tail. She's like going crazy. Can you see her tail? I can see her tail. <laughs> Tippy's on the <laughs> other side. Oh my God. That's hilarious. I know. Is that Tippy? Oh my God, they're so funny. Can you see it? Oh, you. Oh, there's a box in the way. It's all my crap on my desk. They're so cute. Aww. Sorry. You can only see that on YouTube. Sorry, Maggie. Um, okay, so, and then if the, none of those work, there's actually a third option, which is that you can apply pig's blood to the warts. Oh, no, thank you. And then rub it off with a cloth and then that cloth is made up into a parcel and that is left on the road and then whoever grabs and opens that bag then the warts go onto their hands so it's basically the first one plus blood and I'm not but sure that why. sounds more like it would happen because that's an actual like um you're Process. rubbing it on your wart right and that's how warts get passed isn't it <sighs> Who uses blood for cleaner? People in the 16th century. Witches. <laughs> Seems so obvious now that I asked the question. People that didn't know about modern science. Like it couldn't and medicine. be cow's blood. It had to be it had to be pig's blood. It's like it's something out of a horror movie. I know. Carrie, they should have taken all the blood and just wiped it on everybody's warts, put it in a bag. They would have been free. <laughs> so easy. Okay, next one, number four. 
this one. Oh, same page. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. This is how to cure a sty in your eye. Yeah. So this is like, you know, I'm full of warts, but I get styes as well. You know, you? So. <laughs> I only had a sty once and it was on my birthday and I was like eight. And I remember we, it was snowing and it was April 6th. And I made up all these rhymes about having a sty in my eye and I want to cry. And that's the only reason I remember that sty, but it was not fun. So you never cured. had a sty. You never did. I just had that no. one. I had a tick in my eye there cool. once. Oh. I woke up, I was camping, I was working at a festival and I woke up and I rubbed my eye and I thought I had um, sleep in my eye, you but know, like crust. And I was like, oh my God, I can't tick. get rid of it. And it was a tick Ew. buried into the corner oh. of my eye. Ooh. I know it was disgusting. That's scary. So you can put one, um, what? Sorry, I'm very distracted. We're, we're by getting distracted by Maggie in the background. He's like chasing her chasing tail. Chasing her tail. Out. Sorry. Um, she, so you can get it cured by putting one end of a stick in the fire. And then you point the burning end <laughs> towards the sore eye and you whirl it around rapidly in a circle. And you have to say this. A sty one, a sty two, a sty three, et cetera, et cetera, down to nine. And then you say at the end, so you say a sty one, a sty, ace, oh my god, I can't say that fast. A sty two, a sty three, a sty four, a sty five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you say, take yourself off, sty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I want to try that as well. That sounds yep. like fun. What do they do it without actually poking the actual? Yeah. You just take the burny end and you're like menacing, like like threatening. So you're it. scaring yes. it away. You're like, yeah, you're take it off. The sky with the fire. Does yes. it matter what wood you're burning? Um, it doesn't say, but I bet you it does matter. I bet you that's a very well. That's the Scottish in me. Do you see? That was me. I yes. I was like, I got into specifics. Probably there. Ash obviously- or like Rowan or Hawthorne. Those are my guesses. Yeah, it's obviously a Scottish tree is like yes. getting bogged down with specifics. <laughs> yes, right. There's always twists and turns to these things. Well, you can also do the same gesture, but then use a different charm if that one doesn't work. Which says, "Go back, go back, go back, Sty." You could try that. <laughs> and I know you're laughing because I can't hear you. You're so cute. I am laughing. It's hilarious. This is um, so funny. Microphone. It makes me so mad that I, we can't hear you're laughing. Um, and then it says others place great faith in rubbing the eye with gold. So gold. If you have some gold hanging around as you do. Who well, has just gold? Especially not then. Pirates. Every- is that why so many pirates wear um, old patches? eye patches for their Because they weren't successful. They really just they really just all had styes. <laughs> <laughs> now we know the secrets. We got so many things I own this podcast. problem solved. All right, hang on. I have to let Maggie out. I'll be right back. Sorry, so so many, so many people that live in my house and pets also. It's always crazy. Sorry. Um, okay, are we good with sty? I think we're good. The pirate patch. I am it up. Put a, put a put a put a. I can't remember what that phrase is called. I'm sorry for my sty problems. All right, let's go fix our fix our strained backs next. That's oh, our... that is definitely one that I could be doing with. I'm gonna listen okay. really carefully to this. Because sitting in this computer chair okay. does my back in. Well, I have a cure for you, so no worries. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this as is long easy. as it doesn't involve dead people or no. blood. No, you do need the help of another person though. Oh, well, that's yeah. out. Because there's yeah. like just one other person. That's all right. Why? You can cure your back pain. There's just my something- son's Gonna, gonna be like oh god what have I got well to the 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 thing is there is a little bit of a catch because the person well just it's only two sentences basically this is the this is the scenario the so okay so when the back is strained and its nerves are affected so that motion is painful so we've established there's a back problem mm-hmm. okay what you have to do is you have to lie down on your face and then the other person um 
has to step three times across you each time laying their full weight on the foot that treads on the patient's back, which is fine. You just, somebody walks across your back three times. That sounds like pretty good, actually. Yeah, that sounds I, like a good massage. Yeah. I used to do that to my brother for some reason. Mm. When we, when I was younger and lived with my, my brother. Um, but the, the only catch is that the person who's doing the stepping has to have been born feet first or it doesn't work oh well that's that's no use my that's son a tall order feet first there's so. not many people that are yeah that are born feet first so oh, that one may be tricky I tell you what people that were born feet first in the highlands and islands of scotland mm -hmm. in the olden days yeah could have made a very good living for themselves yeah. because they would have been in demand for people's bad backs because for sure. there actually weren't that many feet first people and they could have charged what they liked basically I wonder if because so many poor women were killed during childbirth especially having breech babies mm -hmm. there probably were hardly any at, that at all if they even survived, right? Because now a lot of times they're delivered via C-section because yeah. they, they couldn't be mm -hmm. delivered breach. Fascinating. But it must have worked at least once or this wouldn't be a cure. How would you know? <laughs> oh, you'd know. How would you know that, you'd be, that it was a feet first person? Well, I think because they're so rare and dangerous. I'm sure everybody knew. No, but would you know because your back would be cured or would you know like you could you could have somebody who could be um, a charlatan who could be like I can cure your back because I'm a feet first mm. person and if you pay me uh, some gold because I need some for my sty and my eye then <laughs> then I'll cure your back and it could just be somebody that was lying that is a risk you take when they walk across your back. I guess I but, reckon anyone walking but, across your back when your back sore could actually feel super yeah. nice. I was going to say, but either way, it's a win if it works. So even if they're lying and your back feels better, that's a win. And I if know. they're, you know, or if they really truly were feet first and it works, that's also a win. So I feel like there's no downside to that situation. That's I don't know why that's number four for you, because to me, that would be like way ahead of dead fingers in the mouth. Well, this is what I said. It was in no particular order. This is okay. the order in which I discovered that these were my, these were, these should be oh. included. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that meant. This is so, a Karen just random from one to order. and stuck a pin in it. Yes. And okay. Yes. Welcome to my she world. Research this morning. Because I decided last night I was scrapping all my other ideas for this one because it's so good. <laughs> I had to share them all and this way I it, could do this it. This is amazing. I'm loving it. <laughs> oh, good. So the next one is our first, I believe it's our first and only charm. There's a lot of charms in this book, actually. Uh -huh. um, and this one I just found um, just mildly more amusing than some of the other ones. So I thought I would mm -hmm. share them for you. This is uh, for a charm for sprains. So sprained ankle, sprained uh -huh. wrist, what have you. So this is also to be more effective when it's, uh, it has to be repeated three times, which is kind of a, a chore because it's not super, it's not super long, but it's also not super short if you're memorizing uh -huh. it and you have to say it three times. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to go for it. Okay. You ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm super ready. A charm in sooth. The charm that Column Kill applied to a young man's knee in the hill for pang, for swelling, for hurt, for wound, for abrasion, for sprain, for portions, for divisions, for varicose vein, for dislocated bone. Christ went out at early morn. He found the legs of horses broken by turns. When he alighted on the ground, he healed a horse's leg. He put marrow to marrow and bone to bone. He put blood to blood and flesh to flesh. Juice to juice and vein to vein. As he healed that, may he heal this because of Christ and his powers together. One third today, two thirds tomorrow, and the whole day after. <laughs> I've forgotten the first half by the time you got to the second half. Like what? Three times. <laughs> 
Yes. And part of the charm, in addition to saying that three times, you have to Uh take a handful of earth from a gray mound and apply it to the foot. And then the sufferer who has the sprain must also go three times diesel southwardly round the mound on Sunday. But unfortunately, the practice of using it for cures of this kind has strangely become obsolete. Oh, super gosh, weird. Yeah. I know, I super know. weird. And so this was published they... in 1900. So unfortunately, by the 20th century, they weren't doing that anymore. We need find... to bring it back because, you know, I the NHS is crippled at the moment yeah. and you can't get appointments with any yeah. doctor. So the, if the wait lists go up anymore, yeah. it's then worth... they're going to have to start bringing these things back. It's so worth a quick try, right? Worth a quick try, definitely. I know. Oh. Except we don't condone digging up graves and stealing fingers so if you have a toothache still go to the doctor yeah yeah yeah. just try the the springs one it's super easy yeah the walkie one the sty gray earth gray Gray. they're into gray that's the second gray the gray horse and now the gray earth weird right yeah i wonder why i know i wonder why too because do you is it readily available what's gray earth anyway most earth's Round. I know not. I don't know. I don't know. Are you ready for some number seven action? I'm more than ready. So this one I love because it's um it goes off of what we did last time, which was talking about the cat she. Uh-huh. And as this is a book on witches and witchcraft, this one is a little paragraph about cats and witches, Ooh. which I thought was particularly fascinating. And for those following along, this is on page number 19. So there were a lot of superstitions connected with cats, as we know. Mm-hmm. Um, when, and this is sort of like a list of fun facts, I'll, I'll like to say. When people have a cat along with them in a boat, they cannot or will not be drowned by witches. Huh. Wow. So a cat was lucky. Yeah. So if, as long as you're in a boat and you have a cat, like you're safe. You can't be drowned Is, by witches. I've heard yeah. somewhere or in several places of ship's cats and I always thought it was to get rid of the mice on the boat but maybe it (gasps) was also to keep them safe from witches fascinating I wonder you quite often hear in old stories and stuff about boats in those days of them having a ship's cat don't you um, I, can't I think of a, can't think of a single one but I will take your word for it for sure I, I can't think of a specific but I have heard of, of like them. the ship's cat. So oh, yeah, maybe there that's be... a second little, little bonus to having a little friend aboard with you. Yeah. So thought that was really, I'd never heard that before. Um, it also says that by burying a cat alive, which oh, I am not a proponent of people waiting for a favorable wind get a breeze from the direction in which the cat's head is put when it's buried. So and if you need to go on a boat and you need the wind to go in a particular yes. direction, you, you get a poor, poor yep. old cat. Yes. Poor little cat. I know. I know. And bury it alive with its head sticking in a particular direction. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I don't like I that. One. What the hell, right? I know. No. I know. And this is what I'm gonna glad. It's going to give me nightmares, this actually. It's an old-timey book and not c- currently in fashion, any of these things. Ugh, that, oh, that's poor, poor cats. And this is another weird thing with winds and getting them to go in the direction that you are hoping for is that oh, if there is a young witch and they're being courted by a sailor, you can detain him with contrary winds. So I think if she like wants to get him to stick around, uh-huh. you can stick him there having the winds going in the favorable direction that sh- how she wants to by shutting the cat up in a cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> You're just speechless. 
I, I'm, just, I'm not making I'm this the up. Words. These are That's facts. Like so freaking random. These are witch facts. That's why they're on my list. Because I'm like, it's, what? That's so random. I know. And it continues. A cat scraping is a sign that some beast, horse, cow, pig, or dog will be found dead on the farm before long. Oh, really? It's not just that a cat needs out to do its business. And it doesn't say when. It's just before long. Or that it die. needs to sharpen its claws. Yeah. Something's going to die. Or it's point. an American cat and it's forever stuck inside its house. <laughs> I don't make the American rules. I just try to follow them. And when I don't, I run them over with my own personal vehicle. A cat washing its face portends rain the next day. And a cat washes its face all the time. I, well, that's probably why it rains so much in Scotland. Probably. Salt. We've You're got welcome. clean cats. Yes. They scrape a lot, but not all the time because they do get to go outside. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, it, when, rains, it rains a shit ton over here. I know that's because all your cats are always washing yeah. their faces. Um, when when you're moving from one house to another, you're not supposed to take your cats. It's unlucky, which is also super mean what? because they're like your babies. Yeah, you don't, like, take don't take your the cat, cat with you. Nope, it's unlucky. The animal, hands down, unilaterally, was disliked by the McGregors, and <laughs> the Camerons of Glen Glen Evis could not tolerate them at all. What? That is a direct quote. That is a direct quote from page 19. Right? The cat hating clans of Scotland. Those, all of those totally separate facts that I just read you are all a part of one random paragraph. This is why I go to (laughs) research. this This is why I go to research one thing. And then it's like. There's a hundred million amazing things that I end up reading. And that's why, that's why researching is stressful. It's because I want to do podcast episodes on all of them. I know. All amazing. Because now that makes me want to dig into those clans. I know. And why and they, they hated why? cats. Why exactly. did they hate cats? I know. And it just feels like a really disjointed paragraph to have all mm-hmm. of those different thoughts and factoids in one in part of a larger, a larger yeah. uh, chapter. Although I guess he put them together because they were all to do with cats so there was like a a, yes and also you know this whole time they're supposing these are like witches as cats this whole time too they're not the literal cats they're supposed they're this is like when the witches are are in cat or presenting as yeah Mm -hmm. so So that's that's why those clans hated them because they probably were witches yes i think that is exactly why so there's a lot of meanings in there Okay. Um, super cool. I wrote super cool. <laughs> Page twenty seven. <laughs> <'cause> I, apparently, <laughs> I am sixteen, and I, I live, was gonna say and I live in Los a, Angeles, but whatever. You're a typical American teenager. Super there. cool. Oh my super god. Cool. Have you awesome. tell Page twenty seven of John Gregerson Campbell's book? <laughs> it's so it's, awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I had a PR. So sober. It's so painful. Okay. Page 27. I'm just going to write my super cool, which I even highlighted in pink. As already said, oh, this is a really cool story. I was like, what the hell one is, even is this one? This is a cool story. I'll read it slow so you can kind of grasp what the, there's like a little twist at the end. It's only about seven sentences. Okay. Already, as already said, silver fired from a gun will wound a witch and force her to assume her proper shape. So that means like if she's, you know, presenting as an, another mm-hmm. animal, that'll make her back into her human form, right? Yeah. There was an English sportsman, and this is according to a Perthshire version of an old story, uh-huh. who was sitting in a mountain bothy at the dead hour of night surrounded by his dogs. And if you're an American listening to this, a bothy is like a small little cabin. Mm-hmm. That word doesn't exist in the United States, just FYI. A a cat came in, but the dogs did not move. It sat with its back to the fire and swelled till it was as large as a yearling calf. Ooh. That's terrifying. Yeah. 
The Englishman took a silver button off his clothes and put it in his gun and then fired at the cat. The big brute scampered out the door. On going on the next day to Straff, <laughs> this is the fun fact. I love this. Now they tell you the sportsman being a doctor. So he's also a doctor. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we just thought we'd better yeah. add that into this. FYI, story. he's a doctor. They should kind of start with that. Um, he was sent the next day to go see a farmer's wife who had become suddenly ill. He went and extracted his own silver button from her right breast. Oh, it, of course it had to be the breast. It was like <laughs> stuck in her arm or a leg, you know. It had to be that part of her body. Well, I mean, they could have oh, said super spooky. Isn't that cool? I like it short yeah. and sweet. And I was like, oh, it's going on the list. They love that. Ah. And do you know, that's a little bit like how, is it not silver bullets for vampires? Yeah. Oh, what well, werewolves. Aren't they for oh, werewolves? werewolves? It's werewolves. Yeah. Is it? I don't know. I think so. Yeah. Is Garlic and steaks for vampires. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it is werewolves. Silver bullet yeah. for were. I don't know. I don't Some know. other magical Google creature, not shit. just a cat. What does it kill? Can you Google that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Google, but I'm not gonna study because okay. I am too scared to speak to her. You're too scared to speak to her. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, this is a cool one. And I wrote <laughs> the next one. I wrote super scary. <laughs> Number nine. It's a werewolf. It is a werewolf. Okay. Yeah. Re- read all my Anne Rice novels diligently. Did you used to eat, read Anne Rice? Um, very trendy I back in the nineties. I have read some of them, but I've got the mind of a gold memory of a goldfish. And I can't really mm. remember what ones or what yeah, happened in them. I just remember the old vampire. Oh my god, Maggie just grabbed my foot massager and is now running around. Just just a fun fact. Do you want a funny, funny, yes. disgusting fun fact? Yes. Fits right into today's There's, episode. <laughs> yeah, this is this is disgusting. There's also something, a medicine called a silver bullet. Oh. Oh, God. That works by stimulating the bowel muscles and Ew. accumulating water in your intestines. Oh. So you take it at bedtime so that you're not constipated the next day. Oh. And it's Sorry, that was bullet. disgusting. So you like, oh, it's yeah. called a silver bullet. Gross. I know. That was, <clears throat> sorry, that was gross. <laughs> not, not as gross as dead man's fingers. Dead man's finger. Yeah. Mm-mm. For pig warts yeah pig or any of the other of your top 10 (laughs) oh yeah this is a cool oh this is a scary story this is also not long that's also why I chose it this is a little it's like a little creepy ghost story Ooh, but it's got a little darker edge to it which I liked but it's one this is um on page 28 and it's entitled the chapter is called wizard rising after death Although there's multiple stories in this chapter called that. So it's a little strange, but, um, but the first sentence does say that people who practiced forbidden arts as may readily be supposed did not rest after death when buried, when buried, they remain quiet like other people, but till then might be troublesome. That's very vague, but scary. Among the hills of Rosshire, an old man who in his time was not quote unquote canny died in his son's house, a lonely hut in the hills remote from other houses. He was stretched and adjusted on a board in a closet and the shepherd leaving his wife and children in the house went to the straff for people to come to the wake and funeral. So he died. They laid him out in this Uh closet and then he went to go get people. At midnight, one of the children playing through the house peeped in at the keyhole at the closet and cried out, I know, mother, mother, my grandfather is rising. The door of the closet was fast locked and the dead man, finding he could could not open it, began to scrape and dig the earth below it to make a passage for himself. That is like zombie shit right there, right? That would make a really scary That's movie. Terrifying. I know. No. The children gathered around their mother in an extremity of terror, all listened to the scraping of the unhallowed corpse. 
At last, the head appeared below the door. The court ah. increased its exertion and the terror of the mother and children became intense. Yeah, you think? The body Get was in. I, I know. I have to go to bed soon. Oh, That's sorry. It's in. only two more sentences. The body was halfway through below the door when the cock crew and it fell powerless in the pit that I had dug. So I think it like the sun rose like 6 a.m. Like like the you know the rooster. Oh, it so the daylight stopped it. I think so. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So it was like and a it, vampire. And then it fell powerless in the pit that I had dug. Like instantly, like, pfft, oh, died. Oh, that is so freaky. Isn't that super scary? And then it said that pit could never afterwards be kept filled up to the rest of the level of the floor of the rest of the house. Uh, like even if they kept trying to fill it, it like wouldn't fill all the way back uh, up. Oh, isn't that so disturbing? I don't know what to say to that because you've kind of freaked me out. Super creepy. I thought so too. Although it was usual in those days, um, quite a usual occurrence for people to be buried alive. Because they had people that would like go into comas and things and they didn't know that that's what it was and they would like bury them alive and then they would find them afterwards with claw marks on their yeah, inside what, of their coffins but and... if he had if he was just sitting in a closet he would say like hey i'm not really dead or yeah. like he wouldn't just be like, <clears throat> like zombie so he turned into a weird zombie creature and like dug his way halfway out i can just like picture it all yeah, in my head so disgusting right can you imagine looking First of all, if you've got a dead person in a closet, would you look through the keyhole? I would not. I wouldn't, but I'm sure there's a lot of naughty kids that would, for sure. I don't actually know if I could handle sleeping in the same house that had a dead person in the closet. I know. It's super creepy. But then they did that in those days, didn't they? They At least they locked it. What if they had not locked it? Well, there's also a Scottish tradition of having to have windows open when somebody dies so that their soul can escape so that's what they did wrong oh. they didn't let the soul escape hmm. i did not know that yeah i'm sure there's a I'm gonna <clears throat> google <laughs> <laughs> i can't not google this i'm sure there's a tradition of leaving your windows open but it did not make mention of the windows so i have no idea all i know is that scared the crap out of me but if you were locked in a, a closet, then there wouldn't be windows open. The person. Would oh, be- they're in a closet. That's good. That's a yeah. good point. There's not typically windows. The in opening closets. of a window for the soul of the loved one to pass through once they have died. Oh. I'm sure it's a Scottish tradition. That's yeah, that's super interesting. Makes sense to me. So I have one more and it's super short and I thought it was the perfect little ending on our, Oh, are we at number 10? We're number 10 and it's, it's, it's all by itself on page 29 under the chapter heading, how to detect witches. Oh yes. Here we go. Just two sentences. Just love this book so much. Okay. Here you go. This is how you just find one out early in the morning. On the first Monday of each of the four quarters of the year. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. The smoke from a witch's house, and this is in italics, goes against the wind. (gasps) Which I think is super cool. Ooh. Yes. Well, I would be safe then. Because I don't ever get up early in the morning. (laughs) Well, that's funny that you should say that because the next sentence, I said there's, this was only two sentences. Oh. The last of the two of two sentences says, this may be seen by anyone who takes the trouble of rising early and going to an eminence, which whence the witch's house can be seen. <laughs> so they're basically like, good luck to you. If you actually want to go through with if that. You actually only first get your trouble. Exactly. <laughs> then you can tell. At least they're realistic about it. But I mean, hey, they tell you exactly how to do it. Well, if they followed that rule, then then they would have wouldn't have needed all the horrible 
witch pricker and confessions and starving and walking and all the other things that they did so much time and trouble yeah they could have just waited till the four times of the year but i mean the witch hunts lasted like a hundred years so they would have had a hundred chances 400 chances to do that exactly like higher math I just did I'm so proud of myself I'm so proud of you it did take you a minute though you did have to correct yourself it wasn't the first pass (laughs) (laughs) did it yes oh my gosh so you didn't those, have to ask Siri though. Siri I was did not. Four, four yeah, didn't have to four. whip out my Google assistance. <laughs> and as always, I did all my note taking and our ruminations. Oh, this I is love my it. freaking favorite book. Did you I not have a Katty, good book? Can I show you book? something? If you are listening on YouTube, but you're not, you're watching if you're on YouTube. We're going to double whammy it here because I do all oh, my notes in our ruminations. Because oh I- my God, look how cool we are. Maggie's like, what? I want a rumination. <laughs> this book. is, you can find these on Amazon. These are our books and they're super cool. I notebooks love with this loads book. of loads of blind pages to write your notes and oh. then pictures of amazing. Uh, and I love of. that there's 10 pages of lines paper between each photo and I literally it's like the perfect little segment this is where I do all my notes each week and it's like the perfect little chapter these beautiful pictures I know I love this picture girl so freaking much and the cover is this like gorgeous matte velvety yummy thing that I love I really do yeah it is sexy fairy (laughs) the sexy fairy lover there's probably a human lover this big roman nose that picture that you put up on Instagram of one of our um, Celtic oh. Collective followers with her was one it? Scott, one not swag. Oh, the Tumblr. It was, was Yvette Wilson. Cool. Shout out to Yvette. I know. Oh. She posted that in my Facebook group and I was like, oh my God, I'm putting that on Instagram. It's so good, isn't it? Yeah. So cute. She's a great little artist as well. Oh, you Yvette. can find links to that if you go on our website. One, one Scott, Scott one not dot com. One not dot com. Oh my god, you matched my S- one Scott song. So excited. <laughs> Just came out, came forth with my heart. Way better than it's, it's way better than I have a sty in my eye song. <laughs> or what do that you say? One, go, back. Would... go back, go back, go back. Sty, go back. That one would have not have made it to the top <laughs> 10. <laughs> Top 10 of 1,642. And here we have at number one, I have a sty in my eye. <laughs> and the witch's charm. Oh, my God. We have to wrap it up because it's been an hour and a half. And that's our, like, sacred amount of time. It but is. before we go, I have to ask you a really w- quick one question. What? You know what you're doing? No. <laughs> Hell no. No. <laughs> Hell no. I love it. Well, I can't wait to be surprised. We will see you guys all back next week that was so brilliant i loved it thank you so much karen well thank you for listening and thanks to john gregerson campbell my great 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 uncle by marriage (laughs) (laughs) you're the best john thanks all right we'll see you guys next week Bye. bye